Why a large image is such a Shopify store killer? Hint, size does matter. Welcome to Tiny Images YouTube channel. I'm Ryan and today we're going to go through one of the most frequently searched topics amongst website owners and Shopify merchants, how to reduce image sizes. Whether it's JPEGs, PNGs or other file types, managing file sizes is absolutely crucial to saving space, speeding up your website and keeping traffic. This year alone, we've already optimized more than 30 million images and last year over 50 million. So if your website is taking too long to load, make sure to follow along with these easy step-by-step -step solutions. Make sure to stick around to the end for our most popular and top rated solution. The first step to understanding the importance of image optimization is to know the difference between PNG and JPEG files. Firstly, JPEG files can be lossy and do not support transparency. This means some quality loss on images and no clear backgrounds. JPEGs offer excellent compression, resulting in smaller file sizes and faster loading. This element is critical for product images as your customers will often scan multiple images quickly. JPEGs are best for photographs, product images, and images with gradients or a wide range of colors. Secondly, PNGs support lossless compression. This means no image quality is lost. As a result, this can often lead to much larger file size. PNGs also support transparency, which is essential for logos and icons with transparent backgrounds. PNG files are best for logos, icons, graphics with sharp edges, images with transparency, and images with limited colors. Okay, so now that we understand what should be used and where, the question remains, why are large images such a Shopify store killer? Put simply, larger images cause slower load times for your website, impact user experience, increase bounce rate, and lead to fewer sales. Fortunately, there are a few ways to solve this, reducing and compressing. Reducing. This is changing the dimensions of the image to be smaller in width and height. Reducing the size of the image decreases the file's pixel count, resulting in a smaller file size. Compressing. Compression involves reducing the file size without altering image dimensions. This can be achieved through various techniques like optimizing the image's internal data or dithering. Compression helps to make the file size smaller while maintaining the original image dimensions and quality. If you're optimizing images for the web and not sure which sizes are best, here's a guide of recommended image sizes for common web elements. Pause it, screenshot it, write it down, or check out the blog in the description below. Reducing and compressing using Mac. Let's check the original dimensions by right clicking the image and selecting Get Info. You can see the size, in this case 7.2 megabytes. Dimensions are a little bit further down, and for this image, 3648 by 5472. To reduce, first right click the image, select Open with Preview. This is a default Mac software. Once open, go to Tools from the top menu bar and adjust size. In this window, you can select preset file sizes or manually enter your desired width and height along with your preferred unit of measurement. The lock icon represents your scale proportion or aspect ratio lock. Turn it off to crop. For this example, we'll leave the aspect ratio locked and reduce the image to 70 by 105 and decrease the resolution to 71 ppi, which is pixels per inch. In the window below, you can click through to see the resulting file size. This image was compressed more than 54% to now 3.6 megabytes. Reducing and compressing using Photoshop. Open the web or app version of Photoshop and upload an image like so. From here, there are a couple of options. First, click the arrow icon at the top left and select Transform. Now, you can manually crop the width and height. Toggle with the aspect ratio here, adjust the X and Y axes, and even rotate. The second option, click Ctrl Alt I on Windows or Command Option I on Mac to bring up a new optimization menu. Make sure the resample is on and select Buy Cubic Sharpener from the drop down to retain image quality. Find size presets under the Fit To section or manually change width, height, and resolution under the Image Size section. Let's reduce the image to 40 by 60, keep aspect ratio locked, and decrease PPI a little more than last time to 50 and see what happens. New dimensions are visible here along with the reduced image size. To save, select OK and click either the blue download icon at the top right or the three line menu icon on the left and save as. Using online tools. One of the easiest and cheapest methods is to use online tools. Although cheap, it can be extremely costly in time, especially if you have a large amount of images. 
A quick Google search will reveal many free and paid options, with Tiny Image being among the top rated. I'll make sure to drop a link in the description below. To get started, open your favorite browser and go to tinyimage.com. Under the Tools menu, you can choose from a variety of free tools supplied by Tiny Image. Today, we're going to use the JPEG compressor. All you need to do is upload your file exactly like this, or drag and drop to let Tiny Image work their magic. All right. So we finally made it to the end of the video and as promised, one of Shopify's most top rated solutions, Tiny Image. Let's take a look and check out what it's all about. I'll be guiding you through the process via my testing store using active testing products I prepared earlier. Once you've added the Tiny Image app, select it on the left hand side. From the menu, click on optimize images and the first thing you'll see is a quick overview and no images found. Hit refresh to show your products, followed by start now. Whilst it's working away, you have a quick glance at the optimization type, status, date, number of optimizations, and total reductions. Once complete, the status bar updates and the total reductions become visible. In this case, over 90%. Inside the view details menu, you can see that individual optimizations actually range from 86 to 92%. Select the image and scroll down to see a comparison between the original and newly optimized image. But image optimization isn't just about managing file sizes, nor is it gonna be enough to make your store function at its best. It's crucial to consider alt text and file names. Optimizing these elements increases your website's SEO and ensures better accessibility. This is where the value is. Not only are all of the file sizes reduced, but alt text and file names are added automatically based upon your previous settings and preferences. Alt text are descriptions added to images that help search engines understand the content and provide context for visually impaired users. File names should be descriptive and keyword rich to further enhance SEO. Alt text and file names. How does it work? Select settings from the menu on the left and the overview page gives great explanations on how Tiny Image works and how important the aspects specialized in really are. Search engines use the alt text provided by images to determine the best image to actually return. In the text box, you can insert template variables or write something more personalized. File names. Not only do search engines crawl your website, but they also crawl through your image texts. Using this works the same way as alt texts. You can insert template variables or write something more personalized. Why is this important? Optimizing alt texts, file names, and file sizes can significantly improve your website's performance, but it can take a huge amount of time, and time is money. Handling tasks on other programs or doing things manually, like downloading, renaming, adding alt text and resizing can take about four to five minutes per image, sometimes even more. For a standard Shopify store of 1,500 images, this amounts to 125 hours of work. When you use Tiny Image, the exact same process can be done in as little as 10 minutes. Set it up, make yourself a coffee, and by the time you're back, it's already done. Well, there you have it, everyone. They are our tiny tips on image optimization. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more tiny tips and tutorials. We'll see you in the next video.